My name is Simon Pearce and I am a genealogist for Ancestry Pro Genealogist. One tip I always like to, to give, and that's regardless of the level you're at, um, I'd always suggest checking on Ancestry the, the card catalogue. Now, um, some of you may have used this and be, be aware of this, some of you might not have done, but the card catalogue can be found at the top of the page on the Ancestry website. And essentially, this is an index of all the records that we have on Ancestry. And this is vitally helpful because it's a really helpful tool to um, find a particular collection related to a certain area. And believe me, I, I countless times have looked through and found collections that are very niche, maybe a little bit hidden that you come across that have really helped with, with my research. So I, I would definitely suggest getting to grips with the card catalogue and really, um, really seeing what you can find. When I start my research, I always like to try and start with try and early on get into the 1939 register because that for me is an amazing source. I'm, I'm sure plenty of you at home have used the 39 register. Um, if you're not too familiar with it, it's essentially the closest thing we have to a census for this period. It's an amazing, amazing insight into uh, a family uh, three weeks into the outbreak of, of the Second World War. And it can give you the date of birth, the occupation, the marital status. Again, I just find it a really good grounding for the start of my research, particularly when I I'm researching perhaps someone's parents or grandparents. It's a really good starting point to kind of get your head into research. Just bear in mind that when you're searching this collection, sometimes the year of birth, the date of birth can be a little bit out. So um, some people provided the wrong year perhaps by accident. So you give yourself a year or two either side when you're searching for, uh, for a birth. If you don't find your ancestor in the 1939 register, well, I wouldn't be too put off. It's possible that if they are of military age they may have joined up or, or been called up by that point because of course 39 register only relates to the civilian population a few anomalies but generally um, and it's a, quite a good indication if you can't find your uh, male female ancestor of military age it could be that they've been called up so that's just one one possibility if you are researching your first world war ancestors I, I appreciate you may have looked at the medal cards you may have looked at service records pension records but a couple of collections that I find quite interesting that you might like to look at. The medal index cards. Now, these are probably one of the most iconic uh, and recognisable collections for the First World War. Uh, to the British Army, um, they can tell you uh, the medals your ancestor was awarded, um, their name, their rank, their unit, their number. Sometimes a little bit of extra information like an address or their um, status if they were killed in action or died. Many of you have probably used these, but you might not know that we also have the medal rolls uh, on Ancestry, and these um, correspond with the medal cards. They don't always contain extra information, the medal rolls, but it is worth having a look. But I always say to someone, you know, if you've looked at the medal card, just have a look at the medal roll as well, because sometimes there's a unit or a date that's recorded, and that can really spark you on to further research. So uh, yes, the medal rolls are really, really help. Another First World War collection that is so fascinating and we're really lucky to have is the uh, Western Front Association pension ledgers uh, and these are really really interesting and uh, if you haven't looked already I would definitely advise um, casting your eye over them. Of course we have the pension and service records from the British Army on, on Ancestry but as many of you may be aware about 60% were destroyed or badly damaged during uh, uh, the Blitz in September 1940. But they're essentially um, cards, uh, ledger sized cards that contain pension information, next of kin, military details, really, really useful and interesting information about the pensions that were being awarded to the family or collected after the war. Uh, so definitely have a look if you have time because that is a really, uh, really fascinating uh, collection. Don't forget to check out the other videos from Ancestry for more tips and advice for researching your family history.